Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Welcome to our ongoing saga of looking at the various assets in the Unity Game and Game Dev Assets Humble Bundle going on right now. And have a little bit of a spoiler alert if the title graphic didn't give it away. Today's asset is absolutely awesome. The entire idea behind this is to go through the assets that show up in the Unity Game and Game Dev Assets Bundle. I will link the details down below. I covered this bundle in the past, and I've covered a couple of the assets in the past. So what we are looking at today is this little unassuming one right here called Peak, and I will tell you of all of the bundles I have looked at, or all the assets in this bundle that I have looked at, Peak is a peak game changer. This one is awesome, in my humble opinion. If you are using Unity, you need Peak. That's really kind of that simple, which is kind of funny because, well, we'll get to why it's funny in just a second. But today we're looking at Peak. We've already looked at U Modeler. Uh, that is a uh, asset that basically turns Blender into, sorry, Unity into a Blender-like experience. You can actually edit meshes, models, textures, UVs in Blender itself. So if you want to do some quick, rapid uh, white boxing kind of level design, or you want to do some simple 3D modeling, you can do so. The other one we looked at was clay, um, Clazels. This was basically uh, volumetrics. It gives you the ability to create clay like objects inside of Unity, more of a toy than anything else, but definitely a cooler looking one. But today, today we are looking at Peak, and Peak, as I said earlier on, is awesome. And I'm going to try and convince you why Peak is awesome. But basically, Peak changes the Unity editor. It gives you a different workflow, and again, it is a game changer. Peak is going to be one of the first things I install anytime I work with Unity in the future. It is that cool. And the thing about Peak is, Peak was actually bought or made by Ludic, L-U-D-I-Q. That name might actually sound familiar because Ludic is the company that sold Bolt to Unity. Now, Bolt is a visual scripting system for mono behavior based um, or game object based Unity projects. It allows you to use a visual scripting language to create code. Since then, uh, Unity have actually gone ahead and made uh, Bolt available for free for everybody. So that is kind of a cool thing. But the funny thing is, in retrospect, I don't know why Unity didn't just buy Ludic outright, because quite frankly, peak should be default behavior in Unity. Okay, so that is a heck of a lot of hype for Peak. Is it going to live up to it? Well, you decide. Basically, here we are, kind of default ERP scene here. You'll notice over here we have the hierarchy, and over here we have the inspector. And what I'm going to tell you is Peak enables you to get rid of both. So imagine using Unity, and you just need this. And that's it. Basically, your, your project assets, this guy right here, no more inspector, no more hierarchy. How much would that change your workflow? Because that is basically what Peak enables. So let's take a look first off, talking about enable. Let's start it. So you go here into the package manager, and then you go here into Unity register. I don't know why this really lags out the first time you come in here, so I got to wait for something. All right, here we go. My assets, and then you wait for Peak. Now, unfortunately, P is far enough along that it's going to be page two. So we come down here, we scroll down to the bottom, and then we do a load more. Like so. And by the way, yes, I still intend to look at the FPS builder, so that'll be coming later on. But what you want to do is come on down here, find Peak, Editor Toolkit, download it, which I've already done, and then import it. Now, this is actually going to, it's 28 megs of assets. The problem is a lot of this is uh, code-based assets, so they need to be compiled, etc. So this process is going to take, well, this part is pretty quick. But once it goes ahead, it's going to import it. It's going to fire off the compiler. I might actually only do that the first time, so I'd be interested to see if the second time is faster. Nope, still a bit of a, a compilation process involved. So this does take a little bit of time, and sadly, you are going to have to do this for each project. So if you want Peak, if you've fallen in love with Peak, you're going to have to go through this process each particular time. And frankly, I am going to. I appreciate what Peak does for me. So I'm going to let this finish off, and I'll be right back. Okay, welcome to Peak Unity. Uh, here you see there's a bit of a welcome screen when you come in here. Uh, nothing really required here, but it does show you there is a manual, walks you through everything you need to know, and you've got a set of preferences. You've got preferences globally, preferences for the per project settings. Preferences globally allows you to change the way that Peak works. So if there's something that you don't particularly like, you can change it, such as preview icons, which I actually am not a huge fan of. I think they look kind of ugly. You can also change all of the shortcuts that are used here, or you can use this as a quick reference for the shortcuts that are available, give you an idea of what it is capable of doing and if you mess everything up by the way you can reset it to the default you also have project by project settings that you can configure as well and we're good to go all right so we are now operating under peak unity and does it look that different no not really so far you'll notice over here uh, our entire scene here has a render preview and we can click that and get 
a look at it right there. Not too much. I don't like this mini icon here. I find it's too small to be of any use whatsoever, and I would probably turn that off, but it's a pretty minor thing. Uh, but where Peak really shines is let's go grab something in the scene. All right, so we got this guy here. Right, so... Okay, one second. Okay, just one of those things to be aware of. You can turn everything off and on by hitting the B key, which I did at some point by accident. I do this all the time, by the way. Hit B, and Peak is back to being Peak Beak. Peak, Peak. And here you see, this is what Peak is all about. So when I select something in the scene here, so example, I grab this uh, reflection probe. You can see here, reflection probe main, and then you get a breakdown. And what this basically is, this guy right here, is this. All of this stuff is in this little Peak pop-up form. So everything we've got going on. So you see here, we've got a transform component, a reflection probe component, a transform component, and a reflection probe component. And then, of course, we've got the main object itself described up here. So you click this guy, you can see uh, the details and the tagging for that object right there. Plus, we could come in here, we can do tweaks to the transform section, and we can do tweaks to the reflection probe. So as we add new and uh, improved components onto our game objects, they will all show up in this peak toolbar here. So now, all of a sudden, you can see here, through using this one, if we want to add a component here to the, the set, they are all available right here. So realistically, thanks to Peak, you'll see this one's got more of them involved. It's got a mesh render, a box collider, a couple of materials, and so on. Well, what you see right here is all of those things. They're all shown in line with the icons to, to showcase. And each one of them, just drop into it, and you can quickly edit those particular values. So what you're noticing here is, hey, this entire large chunk of real estate is completely redundant now. That is really, really cool. Now there's a couple of other things going on here. Let's say you have a couple of objects on top of each other. What you can also do is do a right click and look, you can go and select things above and below directly. So if I wanna select that, I can, but if I wanna get the workbench instead, I can, but if I wanna get that piece of wood in behind, I can, and so on. So you've got the ability to basically do ray-casted selecting using the right-click menu. There's a couple of other really neat tricks here too. So for example, I can grab a bunch of objects in the scene, like so, and I can right-click, and I can actually, oh, I didn't mean to grab the camera. You grab a number of objects, right-click. All right, why am I not being able to do it this time? And you can, oh, because they're grouped. You can grab an object here, multiple things in the scene. You can right click them and you can actually parent multiple objects all into the same group. So if you had a bunch of uh, game objects kind of lying around and you wanted to organize them into tasks, you can also do that using Peak. So right now, this functionality, these little pop-up toolbars, which again, can be toggled using B, uh, they replace this window over here. So what about this guy over here, the hierarchy window? I said I could get rid of that as well. Well, yep, we can do that. So what you do instead here is hit Control and Shift. And what we can do now, oh no, sorry, control shift is something later. Control and F. You're doing control and F, and then boom, look what you got. You got a searchable breakdown of the hierarchy. So go ahead, control F, boom. Drill down, everything you need from over here is available quick pop up form. It's also available via spacebar if nothing is selected, but I actually find that problematic. And generally, I don't think it works at all. So that might be like a conflict. That's the, the documentation says you can do, but uh, I've had it work about 20% of the time. So I, I stick to 100% control and F. But with control and F, everything you see and can do over here, even the pop-up, the peak functionality that you've got from here, you can actually do it from the pop-ups like so. And I actually kind of spoiled another thing that peak can do earlier on with my... Um, Control plus shift. Now, control plus shift. You hold down control and shift, and you're going to see we get a little widget or gizmo in the world here. Well, what I can do is basically drop anywhere in the world, and that replaces the need for this. So you want to do a right click and you want to create something in the world. Just again, control, shift, pick a spot for it, and then click. And now we can create any kind of object we want. But if you look even cooler, it's coming down here and it's drilling down into our assets as well. So let's say, for example, We've got it turned, I can go paint. Oh, look, look, our paint supplies. We can create an instance of paint supplies. So you can not only using control and shift, uh, instance things into the world, any kind of game object you want to create, but you can also have it search into your, um, your assets in the world. By the way, this is configurable. So if you don't want it to search into, uh, you know, assets, uh, textures and materials and so on, uh, you can turn this part off. But if you want, you can literally create anything in the world and you're kind of in some ways no longer needing 
this window anymore. So given peak, you could actually have it so you have just your scene window. Don't need the inspector up because anything you want to inspect, you can basically drill down into it using these toolbars right here. Anything that you want to find from the hierarchy or move things around, you can do that via Control and F. And then anything you want to create, you can do that with Control plus Shift, like so. Really, really cool, powerful combination of tools going on here. As mentioned earlier on, there's also probing, so you can right click and get all of the things that are underneath the mouse, uh, like Z order ignored. And then, um, yeah, that's basically 99% of it. There's one other, well, two other features you've got in here. Let's say you've got uh, something in the scene. Let's say it's one of these guys right here. Um, you want to go ahead and change this guy. So, go, oh, okay, I got this guy. Let's go find a materials pop. Well, you can actually lock it. So you can do a drag and drop and it won't change the values over here. But there's actually an even cooler way of going about this. Unfortunately, this guy out of the box, interestingly enough, has zero uh, references. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab this guy right here. What I'm going to do is go ahead and go and add a new script to it. So go here. Oops. Go to new script. All right. Yeah. New behavior script. I'm fine with that. So what we're going to do is just quickly add a reference onto this guy. So this is paint 1G bucket. All right. So I'm going to go down. We've got our new script attached. I'm going to have to edit that guy quickly. All right. Here we go. So we're going to add a reference to this guy, right? We'll make it a material. I'm not actually going to use it. I just want to show you one other thing that Peak is capable of doing. So I'm just going to say here, uh, public unity engine dot material. And I shall dub the Matt. All right, so we got Matt here. We want to go ahead and change Matt. So we'll just head on back over here. Our new material should compile in a sec. Our new new script will compile here. Bump, bump, bump. And there you go. Now we can see we have Matt. And I could come in here. We could grab Matt. All right, so let's go back here, select him. We've got Matt here. Let's apply something to Matt. All right, so let's say you're in here or you're actually in here. Either way works. Uh, but you've got it selected down here. You'll notice now there's this little uh, search icon here. This is the uh, reference inspector. And when you've got these references like this, a lot of times you want to go and tweak that value there, but you don't want to leave your current context. Well, now with this little question mark or this little search icon right here, just click that guy and then boom, inline value, you can change it right there as well. So I can go ahead, I can switch out these, these parameters on the fly directly there without having to drill down in. So normally what you'd have to do is you know, go ahead and select the material, go over here, open the material, and then change the values of it. Nope, here what you can do, basically grab the thing, grab the reference, so this is good for any kind of reference at all, and then you can again, kind of like peek in and get um, this immediate uh, access to the, the configurable values right there. So what you can do with peek, basically, once again, is you can get rid of this window, you can get rid of this window, and theoretically, in a lot of cases, you can get rid of this window or at least really minimize it down. So your workflow would mostly consist of uh, just this guy. Everything is kind of in line, immediately available, immediately accessible to you. It's just kind of a game changer, to be honest. Once you kind of get used to peak, all of these little features and functions are just out there. And again, if there's something you don't like, for example, I don't like these little preview icons. Like, see, I like this. I just don't like it here. I think this looks hideous. What I can do is I can go into the settings for Peak and turn that particular feature off. But if you want to get started with Peak, really, all you need to know, pick an item in the scene, it shows up down here. If this doesn't show up for some reason, it's because you hit the B key. But that gives you access to everything that you would possibly need the inspector for broken down in toolbar format. So that is the handle that side. Over here, you can handle the hierarchy via control F. You get access in line and that is all searchable and so on as well. So everything you could do from over there, you can do over here, including peeking in. Then we've again got grouping, which I can't do a good job of showing because things aren't, the scene isn't really made for that, but you can take a bunch of objects and automatically right click and say group and they will all be put together under a same common game object. And then uh, you've got the probing, right click, and you can actually select all the objects that are below. And finally, we have the uh, shift click creation of any object anywhere in the world. That combination of things, all you really have to remember then is control F, uh, shift click, and that the toolbar is here. And if you got rid of the toolbar by accident, hit B. That's all you need to know, and it will completely change the way you use Unity. I'm, again, I, I, I think, if Unity was going to go out and buy part of Ludic for Bolt, why not pick it all up? Because this is functionality. This honestly is a tangible game changer. If you use Peak and learn Peak, especially if you're like me and find 
the, the interface for this stuff is a little fat. There's just too much in your way. I like being able to bring things up contextually and on demand. Well, that is what Peak is all about. Select things and boom, they are. Boom, you can get into the values. You can tweak things as you need them. This redundant, this redundant. So much more space, so much cleaner, so much faster. This is why I am so impressed with Peak and highly recommend it. So if you want to check it out again, Peak is part of the bundle. It is at the, let me, oh wait, yep, yep, $25 tier. Uh, there is one tier above that, the $30 US. You get a lot in that last tier, so it's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, but Peak is, in my opinion, of all of the assets I looked here, it's the star of the show. Peak is kind of almost a must-have for Unity developers, in my opinion, because it just makes workflow so much nicer. And quite frankly, this UI approach, this, this should have been out of the box. This should be something Unity technologies are doing because it is so much nicer, in my humble opinion, than what Unity do today. But then again, we've all got different opinions on how a user interface should be, but Peak, they nailed it for what I like anyway. So let me know what you think. Do you like the idea of you know, less on-screen real estate and having things pop up on demand as you need them. Also, do you find the idea of being able to pin down over here for drag and drop? That's one of the most infuriating things with working with uh, Unity out of the box now for me. I am happy to see that change, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think as well and what you think of Peak. Is it as awesome as I said it was or nah, or are you already using Peak and what did it do for your workflow? Let me know all these things, comments down below and uh, yeah, have yourself a good, I don't know, six more hours of weekend. See y'all later. Goodbye.